My name is Kent Clifton. I'm an application specialist for Caterpillar out of the Global Mining Division in Peoria. And one of the things that you see is our CAT vocational truck. That's a class eight vocational truck. Uh, again, a lot of options to put on the back of that. The option that you see on that truck is an IMT service body. So if we look at the down here to our left, you can see the 980K is going to load the 740. Now again, we talked this morning about support and how do we support our mine? And I don't want to be pulling my frontline loading tools out to do some of this support work. That 980 with an eight yard bucket is going to run a little bit of material across that grizzly or across that screen. We're preparing some road material. We understand the importance of good roads as we talked this morning. I need to make some material just to cap the roads with. So we're going to screen some material and then we're going to load it into that 740. That's an eight yard bucket. That is a high lift 980. Three options for steering in that 980. One of those options then is carried all the way through through the 994. It's called stick steer. So you either have a steering wheel, you have a command steering, which is actually like a quarter of a steering wheel with quarter turn. Forward reverse selector is in the operator's left hand along with his gear selector. And then stick steer is a stick. So very low effort for the operator. Steer left, steer right, change your forward reverse direction, and change your gear selection. As I said, that is a high lift machine. About two foot difference between a standard lift and a high lift. And all the way through the 990, it will swing the same rated payload whether it's a standard lift or a high lift. But on average, we get two foot more dump height than reach with a high lift versus a standard lift. And that's true all the way up through the 994, and then I'll talk about the differences with the 994 in just a little bit. 988, if you've seen the 988 in the past, that 988K is also a high lift machine. But what's different about that 988? It used to have a mono boom design. Remember, it used to have the singular tube. It's the traditional Z-bar linkage. Now, that's also a high lift machine, 8.3 yard bucket, designed again, whether it's a standard lift or a high lift, to swing 12 and a half ton of pass. Stick steer control, very low effort in the hydraulics for the operator. So those long days, those 10, 12 hour shifts, that operator's not gonna be fatigued at all. Putting a load in the 775, 70 ton, 55 and a half yard body. There's three trucks smaller than this. And at the end of this demo, I'm gonna tell you to get your cameras out or your smartphones and turn on your video camera because it isn't very often that we're able to show you almost a complete lineup of Caterpillar trucks, but we're gonna be really close today. So as you see the way that this guy in the, op or the operator in the wheel loader is running, we started on the left side of this face. Rule of thumb is that you paint a mark on that tire and you don't want to see any more than one and a half tire revolutions with that loader coming from the face and going back to the truck. Paint a mark on it. Go out and measure them. Full throttle, rim pull control setting in there. If that ground was slick, that operator would be able to go in and dial down that rim pull. So it's going to take torque away from the tires, but it is not going to take any way, anything away from the hydraulic force or the cycle time of the attachment on the front. When the operator heads into the truck and he starts depressing the left pedal, it's going to start reducing rim pull all the way down to 20%. When he gets to 20%, then it's going to start applying the brake. So again, you see we're going to have a pretty nice pass match with this. Four pass the 777, five pass with the 773. Payload control system on the 988 is an option. So that operator will know exactly what he's putting on that truck, send it to the crusher. And remember, we talked the importance of 10, 10, 20 and that target payload. We'll know that we're getting the lowest cost per ton we can by maintaining that ideal pass match. And in all instances, that ideal pass match, again, should be three to five pass. Throttle lock, stick steer as we discussed, manual or auto shift transmission, load and carry. You can. There's also a system on here that will actually turn the hoist cylinders into shock absorbers. When the operator engages that, and it can also be set for automatic, as he's tramming to the crusher, those cylinders actually become shocks, and it will make it much easier on the operator going back and forth to that crusher. Nice, easy ride. Nice load, rated load in the truck, nothing coming over the sides, a little bit of room on the back, nice and centered, pretty happy. So now we have that pocket in there 
for our next truck to come into. So again, the guy in the loading tool is the quarterback. It's his call as to where he wants the truck. He's going to want to tuck that truck in around in front of him just as tight as he can get them. The less I have to travel, the more that my hydraulic horsepower and my hydraulic power is going to be going to the ground. Hydraulic force to lift the bucket up quicker, my cycle times are going to be reduced. That's the 990. That machine will be changing in a few years. That machine is new to here. That's kind of where we started off developing our new cab. And when you look at the 993 and the 994, and when they come out, I'll point out some of the benefits of that cab and just how much more comfortable it is for the operator today. That is a high lift machine again. Again, that's available in a high lift or a standard lift. Standard lift's designed to load the 50 to 70 ton truck and the high lift, the 70 to the 100 ton truck. And the thing that you're noticing here is we look at this lineup, we've really bumped the truck up one size from what we would consider an ideal match or an ideal pass match for that, just to show you that the high lift machine can still load that next larger truck, do it productively, and do it at a low cost per ton. Swinging 16 and a half ton of pass, that 990 has two hydraulic systems on it. So if you have a component fail in one of those systems, it's not going to contaminate the whole system. So again, reduces the amount of downtime, reduces the amount of time it's going to take us to repair that machine and get it back out in the dirt. 777G, you'll have the opportunity to get around that this week. It's going to be setting down at the shop. Again, we look at the rating on that truck. Most of our trucks, we've increased the rating. The rating on that has gone to 105 ton. And everybody always remembered a 777, it being 100 ton. Again, today it's 105, so we put a little bit more tonnage in there. That, again, is going to help us drop that cost per ton. 79 yard body, 363,000 pound max GVW. So knowing that, we take away the empty weight, that's our target payload. The more material that we decide we need to throw into that bucket on the loader or into the tray of that truck, we're giving up payload. So it's gonna drive our cost per ton the wrong way. Four pass with a 993, five to six pass with the 990. Has an engine brake on it, so most of us know it as a retarder. The same thing on this truck to help us on those loaded downhill grades to maintain the maximum amount of speed we can and still control our braking temperature. So again, we're able to pick up a little bit more speed, make us just a little bit faster. Apex control system on the transmission. That's actually gonna allow the transmission and the engine to work together. And that system has given us about a three to 5% fuel savings advantage. As we look across this entire lineup today, everything that you're going to see here from three years ago is showing anywhere from a 5 to a 10% fuel reduction from where we were. So that's a big savings at the end of the day in your pocket. The other thing that you're going to notice is the safety features that have been put on these. Like the kick plates, you're going to see some of the ladder and the boarding and dismounting systems that we've put on to make it safer for that operator. Again, we look at it 100 ton. We also have the payload measurement system in that 990, and all of the trucks from the 777 on up will have a payload measurement system in the truck. So if the operator doesn't have the system in the loader, he's able to either see a light or he's able to see the digital scoreboard, which is going to show him what he has on for payload. So now is where we start getting into the big loaders and what we call the mining machines and the mining loading tools. So that's the 6040. Again, you're going to see the 6040 and the 6060 here today. That is what we call a backhoe configuration. 2,032 horsepower, almost a 30-yard bucket. You notice, again, he's focusing on keeping this swing very short. And I'll go through a lot of setup options tomorrow. But again, you notice one of the key things here is that his bench height. The bench height is really equal to truck rail height or to the dovetail height. That's really critical. And you notice as well that he's able to pull that truck right back in off of his corner. So most of his hydraulic force is going to the boom up cylinder. Anything you can do to reduce the amount of power you're taking from that machine while you're hoisting, the quicker your cycle times are going to be. It's available in a front shovel or a backhoe configuration. So you could take that 6040 or the 6060, other than the size of the machine, you can swap that front end. The only difference that you really see is when this 6040 swings around, where the boom cylinders mount down on the main frame, there's two holes. 
If you had a front shovel, it would be in the opposite hole. You notice the ladder boarding system on this. Again, very safe. And if you look at any of these mining machines, and you guys would know better than anybody, where the operator's at risk is trying to carry his lunchbox and his backpack up and down the ladder. So again, we look at the design that we've put into these ladders and the security we've given the operator. Again, very safe. And you're going to see it all the way through the product lineup. We have over 65 different models of CAT excavators today, from wheeled excavators, track excavators, material handlers, both track and wheel, mass excavators, high reach demolition excavators. But the thing that I want to point out here is our largest excavator in the CAT family today in our 300 series is a 390. Is where that changes is when we go into our smallest 6000 series machine, which is the 6015, which for those of you that remember is soon going to be the replacement for what was the 5110. We call the 300 series machines mass excavators or MEs. We call these machines backhoes. So the difference is if you see the 6040 with nothing else on it, that means it's a backhoe. If you see a 6040 with an FS, that means that it's a front shovel. So that's the difference between the traditional cap product and where we are today with our 6000 series lineup. Six backhoe models in the 6000 series from 8 to 44 yard, seven of them in a front shovel configuration in the 6090 designed to four pass the 797. So that 6060, you'll see them loading the 793. It's a really nice match. So you can just envision the 6090 four pass and a 797 and how much larger that would be. The 789 will be back in a little bit and we'll talk about him just a little bit more. That 785D is a proving grounds machine. One of the first things that you notice is it looks a little bit like a 793 across the front. So you can see we've put on the diagonal staircase. You can also get the optional fold down ladder like you see on the front of the 789. Again, to make it just a little easier and a little safer for that operator. That 789 will be out here and again, you'll have the opportunity to get around that. But if we look at the CAD off-highway trucks, we got into the off-highway truck business in 1963. Over 55,000 units sold today. So we used to, the smallest one we used to have was the 769. Today it's the 770, all the way up through the 797. 19 different models in mechanical drive and electric drive, and over 4,000 of those units have been the 793, which we'll talk a little bit more about in just a little bit. 993. Now, typically, we used to see a 992 kind of struggle to load that 785. Today, this 993 is still a good match for the 105 ton 777 but it also loads that 785 very easily. So if we look at this match, we have plenty of reach, we have plenty of height. That is a high lift machine, swinging 30 ton of pass, 18 yard bucket. That cab is the same cab that you're gonna see on the 994. I want you to get up in that cab and look at it. Randy's gonna go through it when you have the class down below for the rest of the week, but very low belt line. Excellent visibility out of that machine, stick steer control, an actual trainer seat in it now with a seat belt. A lot of mines were saying, no, we're not gonna allow trainers to be in there. But today, we need trainers in there. And some of these operations I've been to, there'll be a trainer in there for two or three days with them. We can do that today. Very low effort hydraulics, push button, no more switches. So everything on the rim pole control settings, your wiper, your lights, everything's a push button on the right hand side of the panel now. Again, very easy to reach. You notice where we're at with the rotation of the tires. The flap on the bottom is your disconnect switches, your lockout tag out, which is built into the machines today. So you don't have to develop that and put it on your own machines. When you get around that machine, look on the uh, right in the middle of the machine on the right hand side and there's a service center in there. Depending if you get the standard or the deluxe service center, you can check, your, you can do your oil sampling from there, you can drain oils, you can fill oils from there. Again, anything we can do to keep that operator from climbing up on that machine, we're gonna try to do. VIMS is standard, auto lube is standard, and terrain is an option. So remember, all of these loading tools out here today, we're doing our operators a lot of good, and we're increasing our production if we give them terrain. They know they're staying on grade. They know where the ore pockets and things like that are, whether they need to send away waste or if they're sending away ore. 
We talked about OEM solutions. This is a mega 20,000 gallon, gallon water tank with the Caterpillar smart watering system on it. So the key for a guy running a water truck is not to see how quick he can get rid of 20,000 gallons of water. It's to see how well he can put down the water to control the dust or to get a little bit of compaction. It doesn't make any difference what his speed is. He can water anywhere from about 1 to 25 mile an hour. But it's what the computer's doing in that truck that is part of the cat watering system. It's taking his inputs, and it knows exactly how much water he needs to put on the ground. So we're not going to get overwatered. Side jets on it. We have a gun toured on it. You get some dusty piles or you're sending some material through the crusher or something that we need to control dust a little bit. We can use that gun tour to put a little bit of water on it. Side spray bars for maybe shooting some water across this slope to, again, just try and control our dust. This is that 740 that we loaded. This is called an ejector body. You typically would not be able to do this with a conventional dump body because we'd have a big pile. We'd have to bring in a tractor or a motor grader to spread that out. We're going to come in and blade up this material, but we talked about the haul road and how important it is that I want to come in and just spread a light lift on there, bring in the motor grader, touch it up, and I can continue running. And then you can see a traditional dump tray. Now, that one has a tailgate on it to help control spillage. But one of the neat things about these is this operator doesn't have to do anything to go up that grade. So think about the support on your mine site and what other tools do I need? Very low cost to operate, very low purchase price. These things really shine when you put these in poor underfoot conditions. That operator hit the bottom of that grade and that thing completely locked itself in. He didn't have to do it. It locked the differentials, then it locked the front end and easily able to go up that grade. And obviously in this situation, we wouldn't be able to dump that truck on the grade, but that 740 wouldn't have any issues climbing that grade at all and spreading that material out. So let's talk about motor graders. When we think about mining motor graders, we think about 16s and 24s. What do you do on some of your other roads that we don't really need a 16 or a 24 on, or where I don't want to be pulling those big mining machines out to take care of some of those roads? Think about a machine like this, 160M all-wheel drive VHP plus is what the VHP means is that when he gets in third through eighth gear, it's actually going to increase his horsepower. Now, not that you would want to be blading in those gears, but it's going to allow you to move bigger loads. All-wheel drive, so that front drive on that's actually helping him hold on that slope. Now, think about your some of your secondary roads, your public roads in and out of your mine that are gravel that you're responsible to maintain. Don't pull that 16 or 24 out to do that work. Use a machine like this. You can put a V-plow on the front of this. For those of you that work in snow, you can put a wing on the side of this. That is an optional ripper on the back. Again, you don't need that. The push block on the front is optional. You can also put a scare fire under this for doing some of that repair work on your haul roads. Then we see the 16M and the 24M. 16-foot mold board, 24-foot mold board, VHP plus, optional ripper, standard ripper on the 24. So if you had something in your haul roads that you needed to rip and you would use a D7, you can use the 24. If you would get a, have to have a D10 to rip it, go get a D10 because it is not a production ripping machine. The other thing I want to point out, we talked about operator training this morning. Unfortunately, the guy in the 16M didn't set through the whole class or he slept. He's making a three point turn. Keep in mind, and let's use a 793 for example, haul road width for your 793 should be three times the width of that 793, 90 feet. That guy in the 16 just stopped loaded and empty trucks because he didn't know how to make an articulated turn. That 24, if you don't make an articulated turn, it'll take 104 feet to turn it around. If the operator's properly trained on how to make that turn, he can do it in 40 feet. We look at some of the safety features that are available. There's platforms on these machines, again, to make it much easier for the operator getting on and off. That platform would allow him to walk up over the back of the tandems, safely step up onto the platform, still be able to clean his windows and everything, and safely get in the cab. The same on the 24. Operator would be able to walk up over the back. Both of these machines are available with constant downforce, so it's what that operator can do. GET life is pretty critical with these, and if you don't manage your speed, you're going to burn the edges right off of it. So you can actually, you have an adjustment in the cab that's going to reduce the amount of down pressure that the operator will put on that GET to help increase that life. 
If you have a 2% crossfall on your road on the left side and the right side, that operator now has a, an option on here that that operator can go and dial in that 2%. One side's going to stay fixed and the other side's going to move with it to maintain that 2%. Scrapers, those motor graders pulled some material out of the ditch out back and we wanted to get rid of it. But I didn't want to bring in a loader to load that stuff out. So I took this scraper up, sent him in the same direction as what the trucks were running and cleaned out that material. I'm going to bring it down here and throw it in the face now so we can haul it away. That is, the 623 is the only elevating scraper we make today, but we have a lot of other scrapers. This is some of the cheapest dirt by yard that you can move, but depending on how much you need to move, you need to have a hard look at this. You don't see these used a lot, but again, there's a lot of value in these when you start looking at reclamation work and support work. So that machine is based off of a 621, which is a single engine open bowl scraper. Then you have the 623 in the elevating. Then you have a 627, which is a twin engine. And you also have a 627 push-pull, which has the hook and the bale. And two of those scrapers would work together. So you have a twin engine push-pull in a 27, a 37, and a 57. Two of those working together will load that scraper bowl in about 7 to 10 seconds. And that one cutting edge will have about 1,250 horsepower to the edge during that loading. So again, it's a quick way to move a lot of material, and it's very inexpensive. Five different models of wheel dozers. You're going to hear more about them, but to me, this is one of the most valuable tools out there. You know our wheel loader lineup. This is based off of the wheel loader. The 844 is based off of the 990. The 854 is based off of the 992. The 854 is available with a ripper today to do some of that support work on your haul roads. And then we have the 834, which is based off of the 988. So from that center point back, it is the same machine as a wheel loader except for the torque converter. All the components on the front of that machine are Caterpillar components. A lot of people still remember these as being a, a Tiger 690. It is a true cat machine today. There's actually five models. There's two smaller, but in mining applications, the other two, the 14 and the 24, get to be a bit small. I want to talk just a little bit about buckets and blades. Whether we're talking about buckets on our shovels, the blades on the wheel dozer, the buckets on the loaders, the blades on the track type tractor, one of the things that we always hear when we go to start equipping a machine is when we get to the bucket size, what do you want for a bucket? And everybody wants the biggest bucket you can get. And that's usually the wrong way to do it. Is what happens is you only have so much hydraulic horsepower. So the tougher the material is and the wider the bucket is, the harder it's going to be to load. You'll be heating components. You'll be spinning tires or tracks. You're going to be burning fuel unnecessarily. So we're there to help you understand what is the ideal bucket when I start looking at equipping this machine. 994H, that's an extended high lift. Now the 994 is the only one that has a different front structure. And I'm going to talk about that in just a minute when we put this up over the top of the 793. You can see how we've advanced this face. He's got himself spotted to load that 789. Ideal match right here. That 994 will still productively load the 793 and we can go into areas when we take down our shovels for scheduled maintenance to still productively load. We are up into that six, seven, eight pass match, which isn't ideal, but we still keep our trucks running. The 994H has about a five to 10% fuel saving advantage over the previous model. That machine has the fender extensions. It has the large tires on it. Give us a real good base to work from. That machine is extremely stable today. That's the big bucket, 244 inch bucket, 23 and a half yard. And again, that wide bucket works very well in here. If this material wasn't this friendly, we would put on a 222 inch bucket. It would be more aggressive because we would have the same amount of horsepower over that shorter edge. It's going to allow us to go in and break out that tougher material is what you would do when you put on that narrower bucket is that you'd find that you're just on the inside of our tire width. Chances are we'd probably put chains on it and we'd put little wings on that bucket which would actually deflect any material away from the tires. Same cab as what you saw on the 993. 
excellent visibility, touchpad, flattened out that staircase now so the operator, it's easier for the operator to get up and down off of it. You can also get the optional fold down ladder on this. So again, when you go to equip these, think about your operator and what they typically take in the cab. It's a real nice option to give those guys. MindStar can be put on this machine, whether it's health, detect, terrain. Detect is what you're seeing on the front of that 789. If you see the wheel chocks and you see those two boxes on top of it with the lasers and the radar in that box, that is actually looking around that truck. And that operator sitting in the cab has a screen in front of him. If anybody got into his blind spot, which those of you that have set in these trucks, and the larger trucks are worse, there's a lot of blind spots. If they got into the area that he can't see, or any area, he's going to be warned that there's somebody in that area. He's going to get a red light off in the cab. He's going to get an audible alarm. He knows there's somebody in his work area. He'll get out and check that. That can be put on any one of these machines sitting out here. That 994 is ready to have it put on. That one has a rear vision camera only, which is not part of detect. But remember that that detect is in that MindStar suite today. When we look at our large mining trucks, we're kind of thinking 785 and up, which was introduced in 1980. That, of course, is the new 789D. Increased capacity on that, up to 200 ton from 195 ton. You'll have the opportunity to get around that. That also has the new style cab on it. In, in the 1986, we introduced the 789, 793 in 1991, 1998, the 797. And in 2008, the 795 FAC, which is the only truck that you're not going to see today. 793, that one's rated at 250 ton. I want you to have a look at this 994. That is an EHL. So you have a standard lift, good for the 785, and with a good operator, good for the 789. High lift, good for the 789, and you can load the 793 if you have a good operator. This extended high lift, 23 and a half yard bucket is about four foot more reach than the high lift machine and then you have the super high lift. But look at where we're at in the middle. You can put a load in the middle of that with the 994. So again, don't think that you cannot load with that loader into a 793. We can do that very easily. So we're gonna get the 994 out of here. I talked about the super high lift. That machine is designed for coal loading only. So it'll have a 42-yard bucket on it, strictly coal loading, okay? We talk about our mining trucks. We also have the addition of a couple of more. We have the 4400 and the 5300 with payload capacities of 240 to 320 ton, and you're going to see both of those here today. So back to our productivity class, we talked about the 60-40, let's talk about the 60-60 front shovel. One of the keys with these is to keep everything nice and tight. One of the big differences between a hydraulic front shovel and a rope shovel is the reach. So a lot of times you'll see guys try and take those hydraulic front shovels and two side load. But you'll find to do that, an operator has to reach out a lot further. It definitely impacts your cycle time. It slows down the machine. You find it's easier to reduce bucket capacity to do that. If your operators are efficient, they set themselves up right, their truck exchange time is good, you can be more productive doing a real good single side load like this than you would be with a two side load. 44 and a half yard bucket. The tri power is one of the features on this that makes this machine such an aggressive digger. That tri power is that triangle piece that you see up on the top. One of the things that's nice about running that is when I come out of the face, I don't have to be putting any hydraulic flow to my bucket to keep my bucket level. Tri power does that. It makes it a more aggressive digger. So when I'm coming out of the face, is all I have to do is pull up on the boom. I just crack the swing a little bit because remember, I want all that hydraulic flow and that hydraulic power going to my boom up circuit. So I'm going to pull that up. I'm going to crack the swing just a little bit. I may have to push the stick out just a little bit. But again, by doing that, that machine is going to produce better. It's going to allow me to have bigger bucket fills. Target size truck for that 6060 is the 200 to the 345 ton truck. But this is really ideal. Depending on the bucket size, depending on the body size, a really good match right here, staying in that four to five pass range. 
That's the 793F. That's Tanaha's machine. It's got the optional fold-down ladder. Got the wheel chocks on the front. It's got detect all your lockout and tagouts, which you'll see in a little bit, are down on the ground. 793 again was introduced in 1991 with over 100 million field hours and over 65 billion tons of earth moved with the 793s around the world. There's a lot of 793s running around the world today that have well over 100 to 120,000 hours on them. Increase in that truck over the performance of the previous model, 5 to 10 percent increase in production performance. Higher speed, about 3 mile an hour, higher downhill loaded speed, so that automatic retarder now and the braking cooling capacity that we have actually allows us to tram down the hill quicker. 4400, again, you're going to see the 4400, you're going to see the 5300, all electric drive today, completely integrated with Caterpillar equipment on it. So again, you're going to get around this. These things are doing extremely well for us in the field. 2,500 horse, 865,000 pound max GVW, 240 ton rated capacity. And the 793 that was just here is 250. So those are extremely close today. The 793 was the mechanical drive. The 4,400 is the electric drive. Again, all supported by Caterpillar today with all CAT components. Rear wet disc brakes, and we're running the 4590 tire on that. So again, for some of those higher speeds, longer hauls rated payload, our tires are actually going to live. So we talk about the cost of moving material. Obviously, the cheapest way to move material today is going to be with a drag line. You're going to have the opportunity to hear more about drag lines throughout the week, but three different models from the 8000 to the 8200 to the 8750. But another very productive way to move material is with track type tractors. But when you think about tractors, sometimes you think about support. A lot of times you might think about support, but think about them in production dozing. Think about what I said about blades and buckets and widths and things. If you had real aggressive bony material that didn't come out very well, I might want to put a narrow blade on it. One of the other keys about a tractor is depending on what you're planning on doing with that tractor, you need to balance out the tractor. If these tractors were going to be working on this slope day in and day out, I'd want to make sure that I caught up with Mel to understand how do I balance the tractor. If I miss that, I'm going to have a lot of that weight on the front idler and I'm not going to have full contact with my tracks. I need those tracks to have full contact. The bogey system definitely helps, but if I have enough weight on the back of that tractor to keep that thing set and flat on the ground, it's going to increase my tractive effort and I'm going to be more productive. S-blade, SU-blade, U-blade, and then carry dozer blade you can get on the D11, specifically for big bulk pushing and very, very friendly material. The other thing I want to point out here is if you've noticed, all three of these tractors established a slot. It's interesting because the two guys on the 9 and the 10 have both been properly trained on how to slot doze. The guy on the 11, again, he didn't make the class. Yeah, I think he was with Brad. The guys on the small tractors are actually, they've established their slot and they're starting in the front and they're diving down into that slot. When they dive down and cut into that slot about a length and a half width of the tractor from the dump, when they dive down, they've actually gone deeper into that slot and now they have sidewalls. Those sidewalls are actually going to hold more material in front of that tractor and allow it to produce more. And also look at the amount of time that they're traveling that they're not under load. Now watch the D11. He's going back every time. So the first time down, he established his slot. The second time down, he went just a little bit deeper, but is what you'll notice is when that blade loads up, the material starts falling off the side of that blade, and it isn't going to be able to be held in front of that tractor because we're not down deep into that slot. You can get terrain on these tractors. We can also get the tech. You'll see that the D9 and the D10 both have fold down ladders on them as well. So again, take the time, make sure that you understand how you're equipping your tractor. One of the other things that's really nice on these tractors is you can get blade assist. So as what will happen is that operator will actually go into a cut. Once he loads the blade, he'll hit a button. And that tractor now is going to carry that load. So that tractor is sensing ground slip. It's sensing the load on the tractor. Once it starts 
getting some ground slip, rather than spinning the tracks off of it and reducing our undercarriage life, it's actually going to lift the blade just a little bit and let some of that load go until it gains that back. When he gets down to the bottom of it, he can hit a button, and it's actually going to dump that material off. When it dumps off that material, he'll be ready to go back and load it up again. So let's talk about rope shovels. You're going to hear about those over the next three days as well. That's a 7495. That machine was brought here about a year and a half ago uh, for Mine Expo. 45 truckloads and three rail cars. About just a little over 3 million pounds the way it sits there today. 667,000 pounds of that is ballast in the back of that machine. Real nice match for this 5300 and the 797. That's a 73 yard bucket with a latch free dipper. You'll hear about that tomorrow. The other thing that's an option on this is HydroCrowd. So typically on a rope shovel, you would expect to see the dipper arm go in and out with a cable. That's actually, in simple terms, a hydraulic cylinder in there. So down in the house is a hydraulic reservoir with a big hydraulic pump that is running that HydroCrowd cylinder. One of the really cool things about this whole system is if you've seen these, if you're used to running these machines, they run off of the grid. They run off of street power. That shovel is running off of two 3516 generators over there that are generating four megawatt of power. Now, if we didn't have the power management demand system on this shovel, which is actually the boxes that you see up on top on both sides of the machine, those yellow boxes behind the cab, those two boxes, the gray box on the back left side, and down in the house is this power management demand system. If we did not have that on this shovel, we'd have to have a four or five of those generators generating about eight megawatt of power. This shovel, when it ramps up, will draw about 3.7 megawatt of power in about 1.2 seconds. So as what happens with this is, as he's digging, when he's swinging into the truck and he's reversing his swing or he's braking, it's generating power. When he drops his dipper back into the face to reload, he's generating power. We're taking that power and we're putting it back into this power management system. And when this thing ramps back up and calls for that power, we have it stored. So we're, we're able to go back and pull that power back out. You look at an operation today, a greenfield site that has to wait two or three years for grid power, you don't need to wait anymore. Today, if you had that system on a shovel, the only thing that you would have out there is those two generators. Everything else you see over there would be gone. Rope shovel is about the only machine that you will virtually see no truck exchange time. With good support of that shovel, when that shovel swings around, there should be a truck set in there. That wheel dozer right now would be in making a quick cleanup on that far side, try and brush it up in about two passes, only where the tires are gonna be when that next truck comes back. Should be about on the last pass he's putting in that triple seven, there should be another truck positioning on the other side. It's so one of the advantages of a rope shovel is I have a lot of flexibility in my reach. If that truck's not exactly where I want him, as long as he's on my swing radius, I can reach out to get him or I can pull back in to get him. It gets a little bit tougher with that hydraulic machine. Something real interesting, and we had hoped to have the 797F here today. That 797, even though it says it's a B, that is the very first 797 ever made. That machine was put together here. It spent its whole life here. The first three or four years that it was here, it actually lived in the mine, round the clock operation. It is still a test bed. It is still a mule that we use every day as we do, do most of these machines. Again, that is the machine from next door at the proving grounds. A lot of improvements today. You know where we went from a 793C, 793D to where we are today. The same thing has happened with the 797. Again, rated at 400 horse or 400 ton, 314 to a 350 yard body. All of our trucks have a lot of different body options available. We got a nice load on that. We're gonna have him pull out of there and go get rid of that. But again, right now is what you would expect to see here is literally no break. When you're running these machines, rope shovel will deliver the lowest cost per ton, but it takes a lot of coordination to make sure that we have everybody in place to do that. That is a mechanical drive truck. 
available with an XQ option. That option means that that thing would be completely insulated, mufflers, engine compartments, transmission, and everything. You literally would not hear that truck run. That truck could run right across in front of this stand, and you wouldn't hear it run. So when you get down into New South Wales areas and in uh, Australia where this is required and literally right on the back side of the dump there's a town that's where they require those type of options. TPMS second gear reway meaning that when that truck pulls away you want to make sure that the ground is nice and level if you're relying on the accuracy of TPMS. You may not get a real accurate reading setting at the face it might vary by one or two percent depending on how well you maintain the system once it hits second gear it's going to dial itself right in. The gross vehicle weight of that truck is more than a 747. 747 weighs about 910,000 pounds. Max GVW of that is about almost 1.4 million pounds. Obviously this is a fair bit slower. We're going to bring in the lineup of trucks and like I say there's a couple of them missing and I'll point out where that is. The 795 which we'd hope to have here today is is uh, unfortunately in test on the other side of the property so we're not going to be able to get it in here for you. So the first one you're going to see is the 775 and remember there's three smaller than that one. So just envision three smaller trucks on the other end which are rigid frame trucks that's not counting the articulated trucks. So your 775 rated at 70 ton, the 777 rated at 105 ton, 785D rated at 150 ton. The increased capacity of the 789D to 200 ton. The 793F at 250 ton, an increase of about 10 ton over the earlier model. The MT4400 at 240 ton. The MT5300 at 320 ton. And then, if we had the 795, it would be right here at 355 ton. And then the 797 rated at 400 ton. Caterpillar has several of these demonstration facilities around the world. Global Mining calls this home. We focus our time and our efforts here. Obviously, this is where we have the machines. If you have any questions, visit with the guys, and thank you very much for coming today.